Guys, I'm really delighted to welcome to the podcast my friend Brandon Strzok. Uh, he's the founder and leader of the Walkaway uh, campaign. He was also uh, involved in January 6th proceedings, and that's really what I want to talk about. Brandon, welcome to the podcast. Um, I mean, this uh, whole business of January 6th seems to have uh, changed your life. Uh, and change the life of a lot of other people. Now, it's one of the fundamental principles of justice that you shouldn't torment people before they're convicted of something. And second, when someone has done their time, paid their debt to society, they should be left alone and allowed to resume their life as normal. Uh, but that is not the case with the January 6 defendants. And I'd like you to, to explain a little bit about your own experience to show how the Biden DOJ and these guys have been continually tormenting you and others. Right. Thank you for having me. And yeah, I would actually argue that you're also not supposed to torment people after they're convicted either. You're you're just kind of not supposed to torment people in general. But um, yeah, I, I so the moment that people are arrested uh, by the DOJ in these January 6 cases, they go on to essentially a, a registry, which I liken to a sex offender registry. And I know that sounds really extreme, but here's the thing. Google my name, Google the name of any January 6th defendant. And what you're going to find is the very top first search result is a dossier that's compiled by the government of a complete breakdown of every detail of the case. And what's really peculiar, too, is that in my particular case, they also include a 1-800 number at the bottom. So if you want to call in and, and include more tips or more information, they provide the number for you right there where you can directly contact the government with more information to provide for the dossier in my case. But it, it's really twisted and it's really sick because they and let's just take my case, for example. They charged me initially with two felony charges and a misdemeanor charge. Now, to remind you and your audience, I never went inside the building on January 6th. I was never, even by the government, I was never accused of any violence, vandalism, theft, or destruction. I was merely accused of occupying restricted grounds and of uh, disorderly conduct, uh, this type of nature, things like that. So as we worked through my case, and by the time we got to my sentencing, which took almost entirely a year, um, when we got to the last hearing before my sentencing, the judge asked the prosecution in my case about felony charges. And the prosecution told the judge, you know, after we had an opportunity to talk to Mr. Strzok, now this is long after they charged me, FBI raided me, put me through hell, everything else. The prosecution tells the judge, we really didn't have evidence to charge Mr. Strzok with any felonies. So we feel that a misdemeanor uh, conviction is appropriate in his case. OK, I would argue that's bad enough, except for guess what? They haven't changed any of the information that's in this dossier on the registry. So when people Google my name and the first search result pops up, Brandon Strzok, Department of Justice, January 6th, they click that link. And what do they see? He was charged with this felony. He was charged with this felony. He was potentially facing a third felony. He pled guilty to this misdemeanor charge. It sounds horrible if you read all of this. And people are reading this because literally just days ago, I was uh, applying uh, for a new payment processor for a business venture that I'm going to be launching in, the co in a couple of weeks. They wrote us back saying that they were denying my application to use them as a payment processor. And they directly stated, direct quote, due to your involvement and conviction with Jan related to the January 6th Capitol riot. Wow. So this business of putting out a public registry in which you're listing all the people who are charged, you're providing details of the case. I mean, that's not normal for the DOJ, no. right? So this is, in other words, isn't it reasonable to infer that they're doing it precisely in order to 
uh, make a public spectacle and ruin the lives of the people who are being listed because this is going to affect them if they apply to rent an apartment, apply for a job. In your case, of course, apply for the kind of tools of entrepreneurship that you're looking for. So uh, I think the, the larger point you're trying to make here is that number one, um, you've got information out there that has become detached from the actual facts of the case as they were right. weaned down. Right. Uh, and yet, number two, this is a kind of uh, second conviction. Uh, and what I mean by that is they're now trying to ruin you in your normal everyday activities as you try to go on with your life. Yeah, it's collateral punishment for what is supposed to be a misdemeanor case. And to your point that you made uh, during my introduction, I would argue that I paid dearly for this class B misdemeanor charge. Now, I have no prior criminal record. Uh, this is my only conviction on my record. And for this class B misdemeanor charge, I spent two and a half days in jail, three months on house arrest. This is my sentence. Three, three months house arrest three years of federal probation, 60 hours of community service. I was given the maximum fine of $5,000. I was ordered to pay $500 restitution to the Capitol, although it was acknowledged that I didn't engage in any destruction or vandalism to the Capitol. And I was also given court-ordered mental health services as part of my sentence. Now, I'm going to be on federal probation until the year 2025 on my Class B misdemeanor charge. But I have served every aspect of my sentence. I paid my fines. I paid my restitution. I did my uh, my uh, house arrest. I spent my time in jail. The only thing that remains at this point is the remainder of my probation. And I have no reason to believe that I will be committing any more crimes or violate my probation. So for all intents and purposes, I have served a very harsh sentence for this misdemeanor charge. And I would like to move on with my life from this thing that happened more than two years ago but they won't let it go. And I think what's so disgusting and and and, and really aggravating and, and infuriating is that, you know, here we are all this time later and, and they're trying to I think they're already stretching the bounds of the law in all of these cases, charging people, a lot of people with this felony charge of obstruction of Congress. This is that that charge has never been used that way in the history of law. They literally bet they had to get permission from the federal court to use this charge in the way they're using it against January 6 defendants. Now, I managed to avoid that charge because, again, I took a misdemeanor plea deal. But it's like it seems like that's a happy ending. OK, you get a misdemeanor conviction, but you don't get to move on with your life. They're they're finding many, many, many creative ways to punish people far outside of that conviction and the sentencing process. And it does have a lot of real world effects, whether and, and all of the things that you named have happened to me directly, not to mention probably every other January 6th defendant. I have been denied apartment applications. I have been denied payment processor applications. There are January 6ers who have been debanked entirely. Um, I have been banned by email services, by donor portals, by so many things because of January 6th. And they tell you. I mean, they tell you, they say, due to your involvement with January 6th, due to your conviction, they're finding this out by doing a Google search. And yeah, let's not pretend like there's not 30 pages of horrible articles about me, too, certainly. But when you see there right at the very top, a website directing linked to the United States government that has a dossier full of links. And, and again, to repeat the point, things that they accused people of. And then they dropped those accusations. They dropped my felony charges. They stated in court, we actually didn't have enough evidence to charge him with felonies. Yet it remains in my dossier, all of the felonies that I was charged with. Ron, and this is absolutely outrageous. And uh, it really shows you the way in which they, I think they're doing this just to serve their, you know, vicious narrative uh, because you can't say insurrection without treating people as insurrectionists. And that's actually what they're doing. By the way, I want to give out your website. It's brandonstrock.com, B-R-A-N-D-O-N-S-T-R-A-K-A.com. It's also walkawaycampaign.com. Hey, Brandon, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dinesh. <laughs> 